Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas. Their ongoing study in the future of theology, Essays to Honor Jürgen Moltmann, published way back in 1996. We're going to look at uh, two great theologians, Ruther and Meeks, pages 241 to 267. Block 1 and half of Block 2 will be Ruther, and then halfway through Block 2, we will transition into Meeks. And then Block 3, we will conclude with Meeks. Block 1, Galatians 5.28 says that in Christ there is neither male nor female. There is one God who is both creator and redeemer. Women equally share in Christ's redemptive work. Cannot women reflect the image of Christ? Do only men possess the capacity for dominion? Is God's image only rationality? In Genesis 1.27 it tells us that the image of God is a shared role. We are to be representatives of God in creation. It was Greek dualism that posited the image of God as an ontological likeness. They located it in the soul as a participation in God's eternal being. And they made the body the vehicle for sin. The soul was also innately rational and linked to the male. This was the view of Greek dualism. So, note three, note four, soul and rationality. Augustine assumed a corporate concept of image as dominion, which women did not possess, in his opinion. Female was linked to emotions, lacking any equality of mind. Today, women have lost their original equality and have fallen into subjugation. Christianity made the woman the scapegoat of the fall and made females linked with body, which is prone to sin. Ruther tells us women are equally saved by Christ. Women are equally capable of holiness. Equality is the original redeemed gender, and we must avoid hierarchical, hierarchical, hierarchical e evaluation. She concludes women and men were spiritually equal as beings in the original creation. Redemption restores spiritual wholeness and overcomes gender division. Human nature is characterized by a moral consciousness. All humans have these capacities, therefore equality. Equality is to be posited by virtue of creation itself. Men and women are equal under God. Men and women are equally taken up in the redemptive work of Jesus Christ. We have to agree 100% with block one. Now we're going to move into block two and take a look at anthropological wholeness. Rationality and intuition are capacities of both men and women. Rationality and intuition both need transformation. Men need to become more relational. Women need to become more independent as a journey unto wholeness, says Ruther. It is a journey unto spiritual wholeness, where we define the theological concept of image of God. The word and the wisdom of God is present in all beings. God is presently bringing all things into life, giving into relation. By renewing human relations, we reflect God by manifesting the Irene healing process of peace. Remember in Greek, Irene is healing of fragmentation. Healing fragmented souls. Healing a fragmented world. So Irene manifesting the healing process. The self is grounded in a healing relationality. Spiritual wholeness goes before us in uncompleted future, says Moltmann, as redemption. A conversion that leads to caring for creation. We are individuals abbreviated under this interactive triune process. Now we transition into Meeks. We leave Ruther now, we transition into Meeks. Interactive process and commodity society. The triune God is redeeming the creation. Even among the God forsaken places and even among the God forsaken people, the university, 
serves the theoretical reflection side of interactive spirit. A church serves the praxis formation of identity within interactive spirit. Therefore, reflection and outgoing praxis. Moltmann taught us to reconceptualize the church. What does faithful existence mean in a market society within God's imminent triune love that creates space and time for praxis ministry, transforming commodity relationship into gifted relationship? There's your teleology for Meeks, transforming commodity relationship into gifted relationship. From commodity to gifted relationship, note six. The market is not redeeming the world. A market providing beneficial future is a false ideology. Even the church's self-understanding is dominated by market logic, a logic of exchange of commodities. Exchange of commodities. Therefore, the church's space of appearance is being narrowed today. Market society needs critical examination, says Meeks. Social good is more than mere commodity, including the ultimate good, the reality of God's self-giving love, as the logos of grace, the logic of grace, versus the logic of market. Logic of grace includes... Mutual self-giving, diakonia, and stewardship, mediated through the gifting of the church, where the church speaks God's presence. We posit God's presence when we posit our symbolic sign model of the kingdom of God and then go out of ourselves in praxis ministry and seek to actualize latent tendencies that is speaking God's presence. The industrial age is giving way to the information age. Market transactions are almost instantaneous. There is no longer a contribution to the common good of society. Global cities have separated themselves from local provinces. Globalization has created false utopian predictions. Now we're going to take a look at the Oikonomia community in Block 3 to wrap up Meek's essay. And I really, I really am encouraged and I really do identify with Meek's essay. It really did speak to me. I just love the fact that he really does have a tremendous comprehension of Moltmann and uh, presents a very powerful essay. Block three. Global community as learned habits. An economy of signs makes up the network of the global community, which empowers itself to direct its own life. The global community becomes concrete as either Marxist universal model or Hegelian particularist model. A Marxist model is evolutionary understanding of history and abstract individualism. The Hegelian model is shared meanings and practices that become simply learned habits which govern society, societal relations. That's global community. Now block note two, block three, note two, the concept of economia, community of face. We must posit an alternative to global community, a community of face, says Levinas, which includes agency, social relation, and reciprocity. Evil and redemption have their locus in the community of face. So you've got your negation in note one, you've got your affirmation in note two, and now you've got your synthesis in note three. Global community and oikonomia community equals Economy of Eucharist practice. Economy of Eucharist practice. Ecclesia is a community of face. 
where evil and death are taken up into the life of God's love, given by God to the community for redemption of world, exemplified in the Lord's meal. We're talking about the Eucharist community. It structures the household of Christ, where time and space are created for God's alternative economy, an economy of the triune God. Under the conditions of history, the Eucharist invites selves into the comprehensive divine livelihood. It is an invitation into the comprehensive divine livelihood. The global logic of exchange must be critiqued and replaced by the logic of Eucharist, depicting Moltmann's treatment of the internal life of the triune God and the order of the household of God's creation, a logic of canonic giving, a logic of self-sacrificial giving, kenosis, kenosis and giving as logic. The Eucharist community is joy. It transforms judgment. We live in the mode of being gifted. I love that from Meeks. We live in the mode of being gifted. We live in the oikonomia to Thayu, the economy of God. The oikonomia to Thayu. That means learning and positing the generosity of God, the presence of God, the oikik relationship of grace that we participate in. Both theologians gave us great essays. Rosemary Ruther gave us a great anthropology, a beautiful anthropology. I affirm what she taught 100%. And, uh, of course, liberation theology has already been here and gone. This is 2019. This, this, is, this, this book was compiled in 1996. But Rosemary Ruther was and remains a strong theological voice for equality under the kingdom of Jesus Christ, under the redemptive work of Jesus Christ. So I just think she had a beautiful essay, and then it led beautifully into Meeks and a real realization that we do live in a market commodity type of community, which is horrible. It's a destructive to self-identity. It's destructive to God's kingdom. It's destructive to deeper life. It's a, a barrier to the self-imprinting the heart with the Tupac's imprinting of Jesus Christ. And we need a community of faith. In other words, interpersonal face-to-face -face relation within the triune movement of God's glorious kingdom in history, in human history, in human future. Beautiful teaching. I am, I've always been extremely impressed with Meeks, but I've, I remember back when I was studying liberation theology, Rosemary Ruther was a uh, a very strong voice. I had a great appreciation for her then and now. So both theologians gave us beautiful and very powerful essays. Very powerful essays. We do have a redeemed anthropology, says Ruther. We have a redeemed anthropology. We posit equality from the realm of positing. And we overcome commodity society. We negate commodity society by offering an alternative, says Meeks, of a community of face, an oikonomia to Thayu, an economy of God. The economy of God has been revealed to us through the person and the work and the word of Jesus Christ, his only Son, the Christos Messiah, the Krinos Lord, the Kyrios Lord, the Krinos Judge, 
Christos, Kyrios, Krinos, Messiah, Lord, and Judge over the living and the dead. And we have powerful essays here that teach us that that lordship is a lordship of leading us toward Irene, healing of fragmentation, healing of a fragmented self-identity, healing of a fragmented world that is fragmented because it is a global commodity type community rather than a community of face. And we do adopt Levinus and his term community of face, an interpersonal community, a, a reciprocal self-giving agape or canonic sacrificial type of giving in fellowship that will bring about the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Jesus Christ. I'm very impressed with these two essays. That's going to give us a, a powerful lesson, pages 241 to 267. We will discuss this again when we have uh, our next fellowship, but uh, it's a tremendous lesson. And that's going to wrap up uh, Ruther and Meeks on Christian anthropology and oikonomia to Theu. We'll pick up next time on page 2. 68.